Good day, dear colleagues. I'd like uh, uh, to welcome you all here and being present at this session. Thank you for this uh, invitation. And uh, in my talk, I would like uh, generally present main principle for classification of uh, new classification of bone tumors, which was published at the beginning of this year. Well, what's new about it? Classification today is available uh, both as in traditional hard copy, as it appeared yesterday, and also you can obtain it via online uh, access. The classification uh, is like in the section of bone tumors in its introduction. It uh, stresses the uh, importance of uh, uh, importance uh, of principle of activity of multidisciplinary diagnostic team, which should be involved in diagnostic uh, uh, in, in, in diagnosing of bone diseases, uh, and uh, and be, except for pathomorphologists, it requires also presence uh, involvement of uh, uh, orthopedic surgeons uh, uh, and pathomorphologists, uh, and it clearly describes uh, principles for diagnostic search meaning diagnostic diagnosis of bone tumors it cannot be established without correlation with the imaging data. Biopsy should be done in a relevant reference center specialized in this pathology with considerable experience in the treatment and diagnosis of these rather rare disorders and the surgical approach planning to the biopsy site should involve a surgeon, orthopedic surgeon, who uh, later on will uh, do a radical intervention. Also, pathomorphologists should be informed on uh, patient age, tumor location, and also uh, should be uh, able to correlate this information with uh, imaging data. That is why the classification uh, per se was expanded both uh, with regard to with regard to more detailed uh, description of the tumor pathogenesis uh, in accordance with the data uh, produced uh, with uh, genome sequencing and also in expanded way due to the reference data and these uh, sections like uh, uh, radiological diagnosis uh, and uh, new classification and uh, new classification uh, is actually uh, uh, harmonized with uh, uh, TNM8 classification, which uh, specifically stages uh, 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 spine tumors. Uh, it's staged dependent on involvement of anatomical areas uh, of the uh, vertebra, body, uh, vertebra and uh, involvement of other um, areas. And also separate category is pelvic tumors, which are staged uh, by the size, which we are used to and the cutoff here is the size of 8 centimeters. And also for staging, they use the involvement of various anatomical uh, pelvic uh, areas like iliac wing, paracetabulum area, uh, and uh, 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 sacrum. And in the new, bone, uh, the new bone tumor classification does not introduce any new nosologies, unlike uh, soft tissue tumors, but it has lots of new data, uh, lots of new genetic data, like specific genetic uh, rearrangements uh, leading to development of giant cell tumors, and uh, which uh, helps us, which help us uh, through immunohistochemistry, chemistry, um, uh, help us to diagnose those tumors with rather high sensitivity. For instance, H3, F3A rearrangement in histone 3.3 of uh, giant cell bone tumors uh, results in development of a specific uh, antibody, G34W, which uh, works, which helps in 96% uh, of cases to diagnose this disease and to differentiate it from such tumors like tenosynovial giant cell tumor. Also, huge uh, amount of data uh, appeared regarding uh, uh, asteroid-producing tumors like uh, 
uh, osteoma, which has specific uh, germinative uh, APC mutation, then osteoid osteoma, which has specific mutations uh, for the FOS uh, gene group, which potentially uh, can be diagnosed with immunohistochemistry and uh, with uh, fluorescent hybridization in situ. And here you see it's the left uh, osteoid osteoma and the right osteoblastoma. And we see the diffuse uh, nuclear staining with uh, FOS antibody. Also, a great amount of data helped us to explain the uh, uh, complex uh, chorotype of high-grade central osteosarcomas, which uh, uh, on its uh, on the incidence uh, take uh, first place, and we see them the most often. Those tumors are uh, dramatic, uh, are considerably severely heterogenic, with uh, rather poor prognosis, and uh, appearance uh, of complex chorotype, which makes them different from low-grade osteosarcomas. Uh, which has more specific rearrangements in uh, BO1 and TP53. Uh, it is explained with the uh, um, phenomenon of chromotrypsis and ketiasis. Chromotrypsis is a specific type of uh, specific complex genome changes, which you can compare with uh, uh, blow, where the whole chromosome is uh, ruptured on uh, dozens, even thousands of uh, pieces. And then those fragments, they join each other in an uh, um, arbitrary way. In, uh, uh, even several uh, chromosomes might be involved, and thus it forms mutant genome areas, which might result in complex uh, chorotype of osteosarcomas, which actually individual for each high-grade central osteosarcoma. Here's a slide. We see uh, the list, the huge uh, list of uh, all major genetic alterations which might be uh, seen in case of central high-grade osteosarcomas. And uh, I would like to conclude my talk with the following. This new classification helps us to sum up and uh, sum up data and to talk uh, uh, the same language with clinicians. And we would like uh, this new classification to become the everyday book for our entire uh, MDT involved in diagnosis and the treating of such tumors. Thank you.